if you could give some examples exactly. of like medicines that you have produced using this, I think it's your micro lab, uh, medicines that you've worked on that have been really effective that, that people can have access to now. So the things that we're currently working on, we're trying to find the medicines that sort of need the most attention, the things that have the greatest impact and to which people seem to be blocked from access most often. Um, the, the, the four or five main ones that we've been focusing on are uh, Sovaldi, which I mentioned before. Um, there was Daraprim, which is the the antiparasitic drug that is works to cure toxoplasmosis that there was the big hoopla over from Turing Pharmaceuticals and Martin Shkreli. There's uh, mifepristone and misoprostol, which are the abortifacient drugs. Again, a very old established technology, but again, one that people don't have a lot of access to in a lot of places. Um, and then on top of that, there's naloxone, which is, again, another very well-established, very, very safe technology that interrupts opiate overdose and reverses it, but, again, is very hard to get, especially for the people who need it. And uh, additionally, we're working on trying to proliferate some of the HIV antiretrovirals that are more effective but harder to get. Mm. so okay yeah those are some uh obviously things that people are like in immediate need of and and if you were to compare say the price of an epi pen to the epi pencil or it, say any other drugs that you just mentioned just now um what would be the the very uh the variable there like the difference between these prices yeah so the, i mean the epi pen epi pencil comparison is a is a good one because it's very concrete. So a pair of EpiPens go for about $600 US. Um, and they have a shelf life of 18 months. The EpiPencil you can build from scratch for just over $30. Um, but you can reload it for $3. Now, its shelf life is significantly shorter at three months, but reloading something for $3 every three months rather than reloading something for $300 every 18 months is a significant difference. It's still, still an order of magnitude larger. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's amazing because that particular project, we didn't even plan on doing it. It was the things were blowing up with my land and people were contacting us through the web page and saying, why aren't you doing something about the EpiPen? Why aren't you doing something about the EpiPen? We've been trying to do chemistry. We don't really do medical hardware. Um, it's kind of not our thing. And people said, well, it should be because this is what you stand for. You should be doing it. And so there was a discussion and we all sort of threw it around and said, well, I know we're in the middle of a lot of other things, but should we maybe put that on hold and, and work on this? And everybody said, yes, let's, let's just do this. So, so we went looking for where the gap was and we looked into the chemistry of epinephrine and we realized that that's not the gap at all. You can get epinephrine in any, any pharmacy anywhere if you have a prescription and it costs you a dollar roughly. Um, and then, and so it was suddenly this moment of sort of scratching our heads saying, so why is the stamp thing so expensive? What's so weird? And it was just that they have a corner on the market and the intellectual property of owning the patent to that particular auto injector. And so we said, well, that's silly. Let's just find another auto injector and, and hijack the technology and, and load it with uh, something else. And the thing that's very odd is that despite – what we expected, there aren't many auto injectors out there. There's a, there's a glucogen pen for diabetics, but that doesn't use a syringe. It uses a little sort of sack that holds the glucogen. Um, and then the only other ones that we found were antidotes to certain chemical warfare agents that the U S and the Israeli military use. And so th those, of course, um, 
that are not accessible either. And so we were sort of poking around saying like, there's got to be a way to do this. And there's one company that sells a reloadable auto injector that's designed for needle phobic diabetics. And we said, oh, great. Well, let's just use this. Uh, the problem is, of course, that diabetic syringes are very, very thin and have a very small needle. Now, this isn't a terrible problem because the amount of epinephrine that you need to inject is very small. It's a roughly a third of a milliliter, three tenths. But it's an intramuscular injection, so you need a fairly fat needle. And so most of our sort of research time was spent trying to find a way to mate a very large needle with a very small syringe. And we finally found that there's, there's a very simple way to get them to play nice together. And then you go out and you buy some needles, you buy some syringes and, and everything fits together. Wow. Yeah. You just put that together and I'm sure that people are very grateful that you guys put that together. Yeah, I hope so. Um, I've heard sort of peripheral stories of people using them. Um, and so it's, it's nice to hear that it's out there and that people are doing well.